Hey guys, welcome to a special edition of the NC Barndo Build channel. I'm calling it special today because I'm really hoping that we can get the exterior finished up. We're about 90% complete, and if you've been hanging around the channel and following along on the build, you may remember our porches are kind of incomplete at this point. We have yet to do the ceiling and the upper section of steel underneath the roof for both the porches. In order to do the upper section of steel, I need to have the ceiling done. In order to do the ceiling, I need to have the rough-in electrical done. And in order for me to get the rough-in electrical complete, I have to have the county come out and do an inspection before I can put that ceiling up, and then we can really go to town. So in today's video, we're gonna focus on the rough-in electrical. I wanna to talk to you about the, the circuitry that I'm using for the lighting on the porches. And I wanna to talk to you about my mode of thinking on how to design or how I design that stuff. I'm not a licensed electrician. I'm just a DIY individual trying to do my own build. I do a ton of homework. I buy a lot of books and I do a lot of reading. This is the NEC 2017 uh, code book. And this is what Alexander County is using right now for the electrical portion of their building inspection requirements. So I've been doing a ton of research. I've been watching a ton of YouTube videos on how to do this properly and do it right. So let's dig into this and let me show you my mode of thinking and how I've went through this process of getting these lights installed. Step one was determining what fixtures and lights we wanted on the exterior side of the house. We decided to go with these canless recessed lights. These are LEDs. Uh, I really think that's the way of the future. They burn a lot less electricity. These are gimbaled lights. Because our ceiling is cathedral, we wanted to be able to adjust the light to point down as opposed to sideways where it could uh, illuminate somebody's face and get into your eyes if you're looking sideways. These pull or use 13 watts of electricity and they put out 850 lumens. We have six of those, so at 13 watts times six, 78. I've already done the math because as you may know, I hate public math. So 13 times six, 78 watts. We have a coach light sconce, whatever you want to call it here. This is capable of pulling 100 watts. This is going in between the garage and house in the breezeway section. So we're up to 178 watts. The rest of our Lights and fans are on order. We decided to go with a big ass fan on the back porch patio area. It's a six foot fan and it's their ES6 model. I think it's really gonna be nice uh, and move a lot of air for us. It has a 60 inch down rod along with a down light. That fan is a DC motored fan. It pulls 27 watts. The light pulls 26 watts. And we also are gonna put in four outlets and we're gonna put in tape lights. I have never used LED tape lights before, so we went to the box store, got a cheap uh, eight foot tape light and just kind of put it up on the front side of the house and turned it on, plugged it in with an extension cord just to kind of see what it would look like. With our goal being we wanna illuminate the back side of our trusses and we really like the look, so now I'm going to order some from Amazon and get a outdoor wet rated. All of our fixtures outside are wet rated, so we need to get some wet rated uh, tape lights. Those are gonna pull about 20 watts a piece, roughly, uh, about on an average, because the front side will be a little shorter than the back side. That comes up to another 80 watts. That gives us a total of 311 watts. So now we know how much power we're going to consume if everything is on at the same time on the exterior side of the house as far as lighting goes. And I wanna design a circuit that will have the capability to pull that 311 or provide 311 watts to all of our fixtures without overheating and causing an issue. And I wanna have a little bit of extra play above and beyond that because hey, during Christmas time, maybe we'll decide to put up some Christmas lights at some point. Hopefully this Christmas will be in, this coming Christmas, but fingers crossed on that. So I wanna have a little extra capacity on the circuit. So let's see what the NEC has to say and see if we can size this circuit as far as cabling goes and breaker wise and be able to meet all of our lighting needs outside. I flipped open the book here to table 
310.15b.16, which is the allowable amps for insulated conductors up to 2,000 volts. And since we're using NM wire or NM cable, we're limited to the 60 degree Celsius column. It is copper. And I have a spool of 14, number 14, and you can see coming over to the 60 degree C column, we're limited to 15 amps. All right, so the book tells us max amperage, but we figured out wattage for power usage. So now we gotta get watts to amps, so let's do a little more math. All right, let's use my electronic chalkboard here, and let's look at an equation that you need to know in order to get from amps to watts and watts back to amps. If you can remember volts times amps equals watts, that will do everything that you need it to do in order to convert things back and forth. So if we know this equation, then we know watts divided by volts has to equal amps. So we know that we have 311 watts, and this is going to be a 120 volt circuit, so we're going to pull or use 2.6 amps if everything is on at the same time. So 2.6 amps on a 15 amp circuit. With that being said, we should be good, right? Well, sort of. Let's dig back into one more section of the NEC. We're in article 220 here in relation to branch circuits. If we look at 220.14 part I, receptacle outlets, except as provided in 220.14 J and K, receptacle outlets, shall be calculated at not less than 180 volt amps for each single or each multi receptacle on one yoke. Now we're talking volt amps instead of amps or watts. So let's go back to the chalkboard one more time. Okay guys, this is one more formula here. This one's easy. We have volt amps and we wanna to get to amps. So in order to do that, volt amps divided by volts equals amps. So our book called out 180 minimum for each receptacle. We have a 120 volt system. That comes up to 1.5 amps per outlet. We have four of those outlets. So if you take the 1.5 times four, comes up with a total of six amps. Add that back in with the 2.6 that we're gonna be pulling for all of the lights. And we now have a total of 8.6 amps calculated for the circuit for all of the outside lighting and the four receptacles. Well, we're at about half capacity, 8.6 amps, pretty happy with that. We have lots of flexibility to add things, plug things in and not have to worry about overloading the circuit. The other thing we have to think about can be found in 210.19. It's an informational note that talks about voltage drop over long runs. Since the main breaker panel is in the garage, we have to run through the breezeway over into this building. It's something to consider. We're not gonna do home runs in this video, but when we get to the rough in electrical for the main part of the building, we'll talk about that and keep that into consideration as we design the home runs. But for now, I think that's it for the chalkboard. Let's get to some work outside. Nothing earth shattering here about running wires, but you are gonna to have to drill through some of your framing members, of course. So some things to think about. I want to talk to you about what the IRC says for North Carolina. Roof and ceiling construction, one would think that's where you would go in this case, but it's not. 802.7.1 talks about sawn lumber in your roof and ceiling construction. It points you back to R502.8.1, which is the floor chapter. And it says whatever you do there, you need to do with your uh, roof and ceiling construction as well. 502.8.1 says your diameter of holes cannot exceed one third the depth of the member. In my case, those are two by sixes. You can do the math on that. Don't drill super big holes in this stuff. Otherwise, you're going to fail inspection. The other thing to think about is keep your hole at least two inches away from the bottom and top of the member and any other holes that you bore or notches put in the said member. The other thing to think about during this phase of construction is securing your Romex. Go back to the NEC and it says, hey, every four and a half feet you have to have your cable secured. I'm putting wire staples in there 
and I'm just using my OSB seams, that's every four feet, and I'm putting a staple at every seam, or even closer than that. So that'll keep you code compliant there. Leave at least six inches hang out of your box, and don't wire anything up for your rough-in inspection. Just leave it go, that's all they wanna see. Here's a look at the finished product, guys. There's one box, wires run up around there. One box there, that's the front porch. We'll take a look at the back. There's a look at the back. You can see the cord coming out through the rafter there, out to the boxes. I have just a, a bunch there, kind of coiled up. That's for the fan. We have yet to receive the bracket for that, so hopefully they're okay with that for now. Uh, and there's the box there, back over box there so there's our four lights over here is the final one well guys that's about all we can do until we get the inspectors thumbs up on our work so I think we're gonna make it a wrap on today's video hopefully you guys have learned some things I know I did today and hopefully that gives you a little bit of a behind-the-scenes look at what I go through during the different phases or parts of this build again in the end I hope this build is going to meet or exceed code in every aspect possible. And in order to do that, I have to do a lot of research because again, I'm not a professional builder. I'm not a licensed contractor. I don't do this every day. So it takes a lot of research on my part to make sure I'm doing things right. And maybe you're in the same boat. Maybe you're a licensed guy and you got some feedback. Put it in the comments section below. Maybe there's better ways to do things, different ways to do things. Uh, this is just how I'm doing it, so take it for what it's worth. Uh, but that's it. That's, that's all I have for you guys today. Uh, next video, hopefully the inspector gives us a thumbs up and we can start installing the ceiling and the lights. And I'll give you guys all the juicy details on that. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.